Assalamu alaikum, shalom, hotel, power to my people that scattered on the four corners of this earth. This is your host, Musa Azakam, bringing you that motivation early in the morning, a Saturday morning to be exact. Do me a favor, like this video, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification icon with the bell. You should be notified every time I drop any type of content. Oh, brothers and sisters, good morning. How are y'all doing? Are y'all going out making that overtime this morning? Well, I want to say peace and black power to you all. Yeah, man. You know, I'm the type of brother. I like the PBS, the black PBS for grown folk. You feel me? Because I feel that we could be better than what we are right now, and we're making everybody else greater. So why can't we be great? Which we are. We are spectacular, especially if we mount up. You feel me? Well, man, I just got turned on. <clears throat> I know this gentleman been doing his uh, his work for a long time, <clears throat> long time. Um. Dr. George Frazier, uh, I was introduced to him uh, because I listened to Dr. Boris Watkins. Make sure you subscribe to Dr. Boris Watkins' uh, channel, too. And subscribe to uh, Empower Series, too. George Frazier. And, man, he really touched the essence of how we could be successful as a people. And, and and I'm gonna play some snippets of him uh, giving a lecture, and there's so much you can grasp from. I'm gonna skip through some of it, but there's so much you can grasp from, and I'm gonna leave a link in the description box too that you can apply to your everyday uh, way of thinking. Oh man, it's, whew, he's a he's a powerful brother, man, and I I, I I'm taking him on too. You feel me? He's becoming a part of me already, man. So, no further ado, man. I'm going to let this audio play. I'm going to put some video with it, too. But it's mainly going to be an audio. Sit back. Um, if you're about to eat your breakfast or drink your coffee, do so. Uh, but peep game. Peep game. Whether you are a center of your own network or a part of someone else's network, this is where the power is. There's a beautiful, beautiful African proverb that says, when spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. Mm. When we connect, because we are disconnected, we're disconnected from <coughs> those of like mind. We're disconnected from the best practices in our community. I don't care what it is that you want to do, what profession you want to engage in, what business you want to get into. I can introduce you to brothers and sisters all over America that is doing, they are doing it to death. You just don't know who they are. You are disconnected from them. There is no power in disconnection. Okay? When we connect, we prevent interlopers from coming into our communities and taking and destroying at will. Hi, George. Try to open up the Booker T. Washington delicatessen in Chinatown and see what happens. So we must connect. We must connect the dots. That must be the movement for our people in the 21st century. We need a lot of us doing a little instead of a few of us doing a lot. We need to get together to get ahead. That is why we must network. Real talk. Real talk, man. And he's about to go in on how we can be successful as a people. 28 years ago, Check it out. I pivoted out of leadership positions in corporate America. I spent 13 years in leadership positions with Procter & Gamble, three years as vice president of United Way, and then two years as an executive with Ford, and then at 42 years old, after I had learned what I needed to learn, there's, you know, there's a thought. Sometimes we have to do what we have to do so that we can do what we want to do. So now, Woo, what he said on that one. Ain't that right, brothers and sisters? 
doing what I want to do. But for 42 years, I had to do what I had to do, right? And <clears throat> started a company called FraserNet. And what we are, it's very simple, uh, we are a principle-centered global leadership network of 61,000 top black professionals, business owners, and community leaders. And we are committed to economic development through education, training, and empowerment for black people. We have focused on achieving only two goals in the black community. We've been working only on these two goals, and this is what our conference is about, for nearly 30 years. Mm. It is my deep belief that it will take 100 years to achieve these two goals. So none of us in this room will see the completion of these goals. Mm. Just as when our forefathers and ancestors began their fight for freedom, they did not li live to see that come to fruition. So we will just pass the baton. Okay. Real talk. Let me see where you went on. Yes, absolutely. I agree on this all day. Black people by the end of 100 years to understand why this is so important. The second goal is to help black people become the number one employer of black people by the end of the 21st century. That we must... Ooh. Goodness gracious, that, that's real talk. We need to start uh, doing for self, uh, put our money back into our, our hands and, and, and starting jobs for our youth. Uh, every other uh, community do, do as such. Why can't we? I mean, they diagnose our children with bullshit. And we going around thinking something wrong with our children. We got, come on, you got to think now. When we were yet little, we didn't have no, I mean, this many children with problems. What is the problem? Something ain't right. It work and jobs for our people because that's the only way to raise up the poor. Absolutely. And every immigrant group that has ever come to this wonderful country has understood that, but black people. Jews are the number one employer of Jews. Asians are the number one employer of Asians. In fact, they have solved their unemployment problem in the Asian community with a simple solution. You know what that solution is, right? Chinese restaurants. Mm. And who do they employ in Chinese restaurants? Mm. Their own people. And there are millions of them. And there are plenty of them. I mean, think about it. We can do this, fellas. I mean, we, we sell so much stuff. Hey, I'm electronics. We sell cell phones. We, 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 can, we can sell TVs. We can sell beds. We can sell furniture. I mean, we can sell all tacos, food. I mean, we can do this. And then we employ our children. Do you know how much respect and how much they would... I'm not going to say bow before, but shit, bow before thee. You know what I'm saying? They would respect the fuck out of us if we provide an income for them. And our children. <laughs> man, we could do this, man. We could do this. Like in our own neighborhoods. And we line up to buy Chinese food. You ever see Chinese people line up to buy soul food? <laughs> Shit, I ain't ever seen that. <laughs> Anywhere in America. I mean. <laughs> Uh, Dr. George Frazier is, is a motherfucker too, hey. Ooh, and he got another point right here too. I'm gonna play this one. Are of the same kind, you get my business. Yeah, there may be a brother that 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 is of equal quality value and service, and you know Jews love black people, but 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 no, they're going to do business generally speaking with their own kind first. All things being equal, right? So. We help our people to chase excellence and not chase money. Mm. You see, money will always find excellence. In fact, when you become amazing and excellent in what you do, you will not be able to get out of the way of money. Mm. Most of us have that ass backwards. <laughs> we are chasing money. 
We are not honing and developing and, and refining our skills. We figured, oh, we got an education. I got a high school diploma. I may even have a college degree. That's all I need. Well, let me give you some statistics about brothers and sisters with college degrees. I read this statistic. I'm praying to God that this is not true. But I'm going to give you the statistic as I read it. 67% of African Americans that have a college degree, once they graduate from college, never read another book in their life. Let's just say that's half true. Well, if you ain't reading, you're in serious trouble. Right? You are not engaged in personal growth and development, constant never-ending improvement, and lifelong learning. Because education is the foundation. But it ain't going to get you where you need to go. You have to constantly reinvest in yourself. I am 70. That, that is so true. You have to uh, adapt with the times and adapt to and just make yourself better every day. You can't be stuck in one type of way and just think it is what it is. No, you got to, like you said, you got to refine yourself, put yourself through that fire and be a better you every day. Real talk. So inducted into the Minority Business Hall of Fame. I'm at the top of my game. Last year, I spent $14,000 on personal growth and development, conferences, workshops, seminars, CDs, books. And I'm already in the Hall of Fame. How much did you spend last year on you? That's the most important thing, on your mind, not on your creature comforts. Once you look at the amount you spent. Man, Doc, you talking to me, man. You talking to me, man. on stuff and measure that up against what you spent on education and training. That's called the E to E ratio, your education to entertainment ratio. Is your education ratio triple of your entertainment budget? If you spent $1,000 last year on entertainment, concerts, and all those kinds of things, did you spend $4,000 a year on your mind? your mind to get you where you need to go to compete in this racist society that we live in because that's what you're going to need you're going to have to be amazing because if you're black and mediocre in america you better leave because you're going to be marginalized and you're ultimately going to be destroyed could you imagine a young brother 50 percent of our children are dropping out of high school high school the first and foremost responsibility of any culture or race is to educate their children. We're failing at that. 50% of our, of our children are dropping out of a high school. Can you imagine a brother in the 21st century without a high school diploma? Where is that brother going? To jail. They're already building jails for him right now. They have predicted that. So the ones that don't graduate, or the ones that do graduate from high school, Half of them can't read at grade level. Ooh, man. <laughs> John Fraser is, 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 is hitting it. I mean, he's hitting it. Oh, my God. He is hitting it. He is hitting it. Let me see where I'm at on this one right here. See the blood drain from this white man's head when he said, "Oh yeah, this 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 is real talk right and here." And I said, "We have a check here for uh, about four. Peep this out. Peep this one out. Peep this out. Is what I'm about to do good for my people? Yeah, I you're watching ten hours of television a day. You're working eight hours a day, and you're sleeping the rest. Says you, you eat about nothing. So here's a couple of things I'm, I'm going to say to you. A Stop it. <laughs> B, you ain't about nothing. You can't be. And C, we're just waiting for you to die. Because you're not contributing anything to your family, to your own personal life, right? To our community, right? There's a litmus test question that I've inserted inside of my mind. Um, 
it's around consciousness, but it's something I ask myself all the time. I do it with every single thing that I do. Now, I had to train myself. This, I had to undo some baggage I personally had about us and about me. Right? And finally, I got to the point where I subconsciously, every single thing I do, I ask this question. This is my, what I call my litmus test question. Is what I'm about to do good for my people? Good for my people. So let me give you an example of that, of this kind of consciousness, how it's, how it's manifested on a daily basis. Several years ago, my wife and I, we both drive Lexuses, right? Mm. And we decided to get Jean a Lexus. We buy them three years off lease. We don't buy a new car. We can afford to have any car we want. But we have never bought a new car. We buy three years off lease, a luxury car, three years off lease, right? So we went around the corner to my local Lexus dealer. We found a car in, in the lot that we liked. And at about three years off lease at that time, the Lexus we wanted for Gene was around 40 grand. And we decided that we would pay cash for it. So I went into now, now going, now in, what's going on in my mind is what I'm about to do good for my people. That's what's going on in my mind in a subconscious way. So I walk in and ask for the general manager. My guy comes over to me and I said, listen, we found this car. We love it. It's three years old. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's pristine. Low mileage. We like to buy this car from you. He said, wonderful. And I said, we have a check here for about $40,000 once we add everything up. Um, and we will give you this check if we can give it to an African-American salesperson. Mm. Well, you could see the blood drain from this white man's head when he said, uh, we, we don't have one. I said, then I'm leaving. And I walked out of there. Went to another Lexus dealer. They had two. And that's where we bought the car. So six or seven months passed, and I just I wanted to go back just out of curiosity to see if anything had changed. You know it did. They had three black people selling Lexuses, right? So that one conscious act by one person made a difference in three black people's lives. That's consciousness. But we don't have that kind of consciousness. I have it because I grew up on the main streets of Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn, New York in a time, I, as I said, I'm 70, 1945. So I grew up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I grew up with Malcolm X in one ear and Dr. King in the other ear and Smokey Robinson writing the lyrics for my music instead of Little Wayne. Have you ever compared the lyrics of Little Wayne to Smokey Robinson? There is no comparison. I grew up... Hit that like button. Uh, share and subscribe. Yo, man. Uh, this elder here. George Fraser. Uh, this, this series is called Rise or Die. I'm going to put a link in the description box that you may check out the whole uh, lecture per se. You, you feel me? But man, he is dropping some valuable information and really just now we need to start using our money as a tool, not just spending. Real talk. But like the video, share and subscribe. Hit that notification icon. You'll be notified every time I drop any type of content. Peace and a volley hat, people.